<clears throat> yeah, so a little warm up here and then we'll uh, come back and do the videos uh, in some cases at the end. I have no disclosures for this. Uh, so learning objectives for this talk, we'll talk a bit about um, the importance of staging and good soft tissue handling to avoid the thing that we really are the most fearful of, I think, in pylons, which is infection. Uh, we'll talk about the importance of careful planning and choosing your approach. Uh, one of the messages is just that it's really a reduction strategy and not fixation that dictates your approach primarily. And we'll just kind of review each approach and its pros and cons a little bit. Um, so here's a case, uh, it's a 28-year-old guy, he was in a motorcycle crash, highly commented pylon fracture, so how are we going to approach this when this rolls in the door? Um, so the first uh, kind of key message is you just have to respect the soft tissues, you know, this actually isn't his ankle, but it was a lot like this, uh, severely blistered and swollen, and so this isn't an ankle that you want to be making multiple incisions on and putting in a lot of hardware uh, the day that they come in. Um, so stage one for these high energy pylons, uh, when you're dealing with a soft tissue envelope like that, is going to be uh, external fixation spanning the ankle. Your goal is a functional reduction, just length alignment and rotation and getting the talus under the tibia. Uh, the goal is really to, you know, maintain that length, splint the soft tissues, and then allow yourself to return when it's safe. Typically two weeks, but sometimes longer, uh, depending on the severity of swelling. And as long as you've got that, uh, things out to length, uh, you'll have the ability to do the reconstruction at a later date uh, without too much difficulty. Um, so just, you know, really basic technique. I think everybody kind of knows this, but you can get a, a pin in the tibia, a transfixion pin in the calcaneus, and you're going to build a delta frame. And that's going to allow you to do the lengths and, and coronal plane alignment. Um, you, depending on, you know, in this case, it's a little more of a varus pylon, so a little more pull on the medial side, and you're going to be able to get that straightened out. Um, <clears throat> uh, I typically do just independent pins, and then once I like tibia is, you know, smashed and the fibula, you don't really know. But once you fix the fibula, it's much easier to tell where that, where that talus belongs. Um, and so you can not only get the alignment, but also the length uh, more correct and not over distract, which can be hard on the neurovascular structures. Um, <clears throat> it also adds some stability and I think improves the soft tissue rest. And it's one less thing you have to deal with uh, in, your, in your second stage. Um, so this is kind of the theme, span, scan, and plan. So, you know, after you get your X fixed, then you can get your CT scan um, and start to come up with your definitive uh, treatment plan. Um, 
you know, this is the way, there are other options for approaches, but just for simplicity, I'm gonna think, you know, break it down this way. You have your two anterior approaches, anterior medial, anterior lateral, so basically which side of the anterior compartment you're working on, uh, your posterior lateral, which can get you to the fibula or the tibia, and then your uh, posterior medial approach. So the anterior medial approach, you're just gonna go medial to the anterior tibial tendon, as shown here. This is kind of a, an extensile version where you're curving a little bit at the level of the ankle joint uh, to the medial side. I'll show this in the video, but it's a very um, extensile exposure. You can keep extending it proximally as you need to, which makes it technically a little bit easier. Uh, you get great access to the medial, and you can even, if you really you know, elevate that flap, you can even get a little bit around to the posterior medial fracture line, um, and it's a pretty straightforward approach. I think the main downside is it's a, especially the more you curve that incision, the higher risk it is for wound healing problems, and you don't really have as good of access to the lateral side. But you can put in either a medial or an anterior lateral plate or both through this incision, so it's very, a very powerful approach. This is kind of the main, main downside of it, is you can get this uh, uh, necrosis, especially if the more you curve, the harder you curve that incision, the more risk you have of this. But I'll show you, if you, if you do a really good job with your deep fascial closure and, and keep the anterior tibial tendon within its sheath, you can generally ride these out. They don't get infected, that sloughs off, and then they heal by secondary uh, healing, which is what happened in that case. The anterior lateral approach um, is a little bit more of a limited incision. You're gonna go lateral to the anterior compartment. Um, you know, it's a little more soft tissue friendly because it's not such a long incision. Uh, you get much better access to the sort of lateral side of the anterior tibia. So if you have a more lateral fracture line exit, but it's a little technically more difficult because of the trajectory of the anterior compartment muscles. You can't just keep extending up for your plate, so your plate has to kind of tunnel under the anterior compartment. You have some risk with the superficial perineal nerve, and uh, you really don't have good access to the anterior medial fracture line exit or medial malleolus, which, um, so it often requires a secondary medial incision. So it's sort of one big incision with the anterior medial versus often two uh, smaller incisions if you use an anterior lateral. Um, posterior lateral, uh, for me, is this is a workhorse for sure for the fibula. It also uh, can be a useful approach to the tibia. Um, and uh, this is kind of what, so just you work on either side of the perineal tendon. So if you retract the uh, perineals anteriorly, you get to the tibia. If you put them posteriorly, you get to the fibula. I'll, I'll again show this more depth in the, in the video. This is just a clinical photo. I think what's nice is that when you, it, when you let that, those perineals go, they just sort of center themselves over your hardware. So I think it's a little bit more soft tissue friendly approach. If you have a little bit of skin healing issue, you've got good muscle underneath. And so I think it is a little more forgiving than uh, direct lateral to the fibula. The posterior medial approach can be uh, in as many different variations. This is kind of a very extensile version. For me, this is very rarely necessary. This is like for the very rare, you know, severe B-type kind of posterior medial where you need to plate both posterior and medial through the same incision. Um, but this is a pretty rare situation, but you can work on both sides of the neurovascular bundle uh, if you wanna do this. Much more common for me is to do it as more of a limited approach that allows you to kind of have access to the posterior medial fracture line. Um, and also insert, you know, percutaneous medial plates, but not, you know, this big, big extensile incision. This is more done in a supine position. So the algorithm I use for choosing the approach, so again, I've kind of hit this home already, but fibula, you always go posterior lateral um, because it allows you access to both the fibula and the posterior tibia, and it doesn't box out your anterior lateral approach. So if you're doing this before you have your CT scan and you, you don't really know which anterior approach you're gonna use, if you do it posterior lateral, you'll still preserve all your options. Uh, B-type pilon fractures, these partial articular ones, your approach is just gonna be directed at wherever the apex of the fracture. So if it's an anterior B-type, you're gonna go anterior, posterior is gonna go posterior. So that's pretty straightforward because you know, you're gonna aim for buttress plating. C-type pilons, I think, are where you gotta really take some time to stop and, and think through them a little bit. They generally always are gonna need an anterior approach and it's a question of which one, anterior medial versus anterior lateral. And then the posterior approach is kind of a question of whether you whether you think you can get it all done from the front or you need it to add it to get that posterior lateral fragment that you're working opposite of. So just to you know highlight the B type versus C type, I think everybody understands this, but partial articular means you have some component of the shaft that's still intact to the joint. So in the left image, that's a B type. You see that anterior joint still in continuity with the shaft. So this is a very easy decision for approach. Just, just needs a posterior, a posterior approach and posterior buttress plating. Uh, the case that we're talking about now is a C type though. You see the blue is the area that's you know, the intact shaft, there's no part of the joint that's in continuity. So this is a little bit more of a, a dilemma when you're selecting your approaches. So how do we make this decision about anterior medial or anterior lateral? I think one of the most commonly cited reasons is where's the anterior fracture line exit. So when, 
because when you're doing your reduction, you're often going to have to flip open that should put fragment to get access to the central impaction. So if it exits really medial, then an intramedial gets you right in there and makes it easier. So that left image is really good for an intramedial. The one on the right, you see that it's a much smaller should put fragment and getting access to that central impaction, you're going to be probably better off with an anterior lateral. So that's one of the drivers. Um, the other thing is if you think you really need a posterior medial approach for some reason along with your anterior approach, um, you can't do a posterior medial and an anterior medial, so uh, the posterior medial really only pairs with the anterior lateral. Um, so that might be another reason. Um, and then the third one would be if you have like a soft tissue issue. So this is you know an open fracture where you've got a big wound where your anterior medial would go, you're probably wanna, gonna wanna go anterior lateral on something like that, or if you have a giant blister right where the anterior medial would be. Definitive fixation um, is you're going to try to, you know, first secure the articular block typically, so sort of convert it from a C-type to an A-type fracture, and then you're going to secure the articular block to the shaft. Usually I use these long sort of anterior lateral plates for that, and then apply a medial buttress. And then I, you can modulate the size of that medial buttress based on how unstable you think the metaphysis is. So if it's a really common metaphysis, this is going to be, need to be a really stout plate. In this case uh, that I'm showing here, it was a, a relatively simple medial fracture, so just a third tubular and some Lailer screws. But I, one of the key messages is that it's not really based on the approach. So you can put in, you can do an anterior lateral uh, plus a medial percutaneous incision to get those two plates in, or you can do an anterior medial and put both plates in. So it's really the reduction that drives the decision about approach, not the uh, fixation strategy. Soft tissue management, I, you know, I can't like harp on enough. You really have to be careful about making full thickness flaps. I'll show this more in videos. Uh, minimize self-retainers that are going to put constant pressure on things um, and then do really meticulous layered closure. You've got to get the fascia closed over these plates or you're asking for trouble. So the take-home messages, uh, stage treatment uh, and good soft tissue handling are really critical to prevent infection. Uh, posterior lateral approach, I think, is a workhorse for the fibula and pilon fractures. Uh, B-type fractures, the partial articular ones, you really want to uh, just think of where the apex is and direct your approach towards it and apply a buttress. And then for C-types, you know, you're going to do some, you know, anterior medial versus anterior lateral for the reasons we talked about, and then plus or minus for a posterior approach if you need it for a posterior lateral fragment. Thanks so much.